it's just going to be a quick look at a project I've been working on. I have the code up on GitHub, and it's a project I've been working on a lot, so it's changing a lot. It's still in its early stages. But I just want to give you a peek at it. It's similar to what I showed you uh, just not too long ago, how I was making a template and some functions and stuff for um, Phaser 2D, for designing 2D games. Uh, this will be using uh, 3JS uh, to create uh, 3D interfaces uh, in a web page. Um, and both those libraries, those frameworks, are easy to use, but I'm just trying to simplify the things I do quite often and make things a little bit quicker. And I'm incorporating a lot of uh, Vim uh, shortcuts that I've created, so also check out my uh, Vim page. So if you go to 3, or 3JS, if you go to uh, GitHub, uh, my username is metalx1000, there's a project called 3JS Template. And there you can get the source code. And there's a code, uh, a little script in here called 3JS Git. And if you run this, which I'm about to run, it basically pulls down this project, but uh, unzips it and puts it in a folder that you name. Uh, you also, while you're at my uh, GitHub page, check out my Vim setup, which has my Vim setup files and I have a lot of shortcuts and templates in there uh, that go along with this. So uh, here I have a web server running looking at a folder that does not exist, but we're out to create that. So I'm going to run 3JS git that's inside that repository already. Um, so if you just pull down that script, you can run this. And you give it a project name. I'm just going to call it test. I'll hit enter. It downloads, unzips, and renames the folder test. I'm already in my web directory. So now if I refresh here, I have a blank canvas. It's just all black. Um, so now I can go into my test folder. And I'm going to start looking. So there's there's two main scripts in here. If I list out, uh, sorry, list out what's in the JS folder, you will see that there's a functions, which are functions I've created uh, that kind of you will call inside your main JS, and it's just kind of to simplify stuff. So you can look through that. But let's go ahead and just work with the uh, main JS. And by default, we run our create function, which calls a function I created called setup scene. Uh, I'm going to create a camera and uh, move its X position to one. I am going to set the type of camera to orbiting controls. I'm also gonna be adding in other things like fly control, and maybe first person shooter later on. But right now, orbits, and we have limits set to false. I'll show you what that is later on. Uh, right here, we're, this is, this is gonna change. This is very sloppy here. Basically, I'm just waiting a second for everything to load and then putting everything inside a list called clickable. Uh, so that you can have clickable items. Uh, but this is a very soft way to do it, just kind of something I did for now. Obviously, if the scene takes more than a second to load, this won't work. Uh, and then we have our animation loop, which is going to just render stuff out. So let's go ahead and uh, add some stuff to our scene. So all I have to do is come up here, and I am going to say... Again, I'm using some stuff from my VimRC file here. Let's create a cube. I'll just enter, and it creates this line here for us. And I'm passing it a JSON uh, object with information in it. If you don't put anything in there, there are defaults. So for example, I could uh, have this here. I'll save it, refresh my game here, and you can see there's our cube. Uh, again, we have the orbiting camera by default. Uh, and so if I left click or one finger touch on a touch screen, I can rotate around uh, the center here. If I right click, I can move the camera left and right. And on a touch screen, that would be two fingers. And to zoom in and out, I can scroll or center click and drag. Or on a touch screen, it's three fingers. No, I'm sorry, two fingers is zooming in and out. Three fingers is to drag. I didn't design that. That's a script that comes with 3J. Uh, um, 3JS, I just made it simple to call just by saying orbit controls, it automatically links all that to the camera. You know, it's normally a few lines of code. I'm just trying to shorten everything down to one line of code. But there's our cube. Uh, but at the same time, if I was to take this, I can erase all this out. And you can see if I refresh, there's a cube there in the center because it loads up those defaults of at the center of our scene at uh, size of one. Uh, but let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to say uh, create a cube. And I'll just move the position to uh, 1, 1, 1. And if I refresh now, you can see that we have two cubes. OK, simple enough. And uh, they are clickable. Right now, each time I click one, they are, with the last one I clicked, goes into a variable called click. Let me open up my little console panel here. And it's clicked, capital letters. There's the last item that was clicked. If I click the other one, I'm not sure which one I click. So yeah, you can see that the, the two different objects there. Um, 
and but they also have it so that when you click one if it each time you click an object it adds it to an array but if you click it again it removes it from the array and you'll see how that works here in a moment but I want to show you a few other things before we get to that uh, so there we have two cubes we can also add a cylinder very simply uh, similar things I'm gonna add some other objects and uh, items here again you can leave all this blank and it'll put in defaults or I put those there so you know what some of your options are I can refresh that and you actually don't see that because it's in the same position of that as that cube uh, but these functions also uh, return the objects so I can uh, take like this cube here that's in the center and I can say cube equals and then I can say you know later on in my script if I move it I can say that cube position dot x equals one and now we have that cube has been moved over and our cylinder is right there. Let's go ahead and make these objects move. I'm going to go down to the bottom of my script here and I'm going to choose a function here called, um, uh, not rotate camera, but selected. So here is a function that will loop through all selected again every time you click an item it adds it to the selected group uh, the array if you click it again it removes it here it's saying every time you run this function rotate every object in that array a little bit so all we have to do is add that to our animate here so we'll say all selected so now when we refresh I can click on an object click on another object and they're all rotating if I click on the objects again one by one they are removed from that list. Obviously you can add other functions in there and uh, you know say if this type of item is selected but right now it looks at all the mesh and adds it to that selected. Let's go ahead and talk about mesh. Uh, obviously you're probably going to want to not create everything in code. You're going to design scenes in uh, Blender 3D or a similar program. Uh, right now I uh, have created a function to simplify the loading of DA, uh, DAE um, scenes so all I have to do is say uh, let's see, I actually should have, yep. So here you can see it says uh, my function is low DAE and I'm passing it a scene. If you leave it blank, again, this is the default scene that I've provided. I've actually defied, uh, d provide two default scenes. But you can see it loaded this scene up with three monkey heads and a cylinder and they have been added to our selectable list so you can make these things rotate as well. And again, uh, I have another one that's called monkey and that's just a single monkey head so but you can load any scene you want any DAE file into a folder here called models DAE and you can see I have two there put them in there and just pass that function that that uh, the name of your your file and it should load it up uh, something else we're going to do here, let's go ahead and add a grid. So going back into our main function here, I'm going to say create grid. Oops. And you can pass that options as well, but right now this is the default. It just creates a green grid for you that looks kind of cool. Right now it's going through the center of our objects. Let's go ahead and again, that will return the object it creates so I can say grid here equals that and then I can tell the grid to move its position on the y-axis to negative one and now it should be if I typed everything oh, gotta spell position right Oops. there we go you can see the grids now below our objects but our camera can rotate all the way like this so it goes below the grid if you don't want to go below the grid uh, you can come up here to where we create our uh, control for the camera and change limit to true and now I've set it to not go down below a certain point so you can still zoom in drag around like so but you can't go below that point quick easy way if you don't want to go underneath your scene um, real quick I feel like there's one or two other things I want to show you oh rotating a camera so let's go into our animate here and I'm gonna say rotate camera and here you just say rotate in direction that you want either one or negative one is what I have so far when you refresh it will automatically rotate your camera now again you can still click on objects 
and the camera will rotate. And you can still, with the Orbit camera, kind of move around. It limits, you can't uh, drag the camera left and right or up and down because I've set uh, the rotate to always focus uh, at the center of the screen. Actually, I'm going to have it, you can, you're going to be able to pass it what object you want to spin around and focus. By default, right now, it's the center of the scene. Um, so there's that. You can still kind of zoom in and out a little bit. Uh, and of course, like I said, if you want it to rotate the other way, just change it from negative one to one, and now it's going to rotate around left. So that's what I've created so far. You know, it's just, I, I like using 3JS, but a lot of times I find myself going and looking at how to do certain things like loading a, a, a model file, like a, a DAE file, which I do a lot. And, you know, it takes a number of lines of code, not a whole lot, um, but I wanted to just be able to call it real simply so now all I have to do is say load DAE and pass it the scene and it will load it and I can do that multiple times if I wanted to load uh, let's see I should be able to do this I'll remove this and it'll load up that default scene with a three monkey head so now you can see there's the the green monkey head and the blue monkey head so you can load up multiple scenes like that very quick you know the only drawback right now again is my uh, little second delay here if your scene is very large uh, well actually uh, the load scene does run this clickable function this uh, mesh list again so that's not really an issue uh, shouldn't be an issue uh, this kind of delay here is just to make sure that it gives these objects a, a second to load before it adds them to the array uh, again early into this, changing things a lot, wanted to give you a look at it. Go ahead, have a look at it, play with it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any suggestions, you know, go ahead and download the code and uh, submit some stuff to GitHub and maybe I'll uh, merge it in there. Thanks for watching and as always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Have a great day.